welcome to the main break show at half time. Uh, what a first half of footy it's been too. Uh, getting a little bit willing there towards the end and rightly so because the Crows have been absolutely smashed by the men in green. Absolutely smashed. And uh, yeah, we'll get to that. The scores at half time, 9 goals, 10, 64 to Geelong. Uh, Adelaide, five, uh, 5 goals, 5, 35 a margin there of 29 points. Um, in some respects, Adelaide lucky to be that close. The, the Cats have burned a little bit of the ball. Uh, but I tell you what, uh, they are getting an absolute armchair ride at the moment by the men in green. There's so much that's been missed at the moment. There's little holds, there's blocks, there's holding the ball decisions that are paid one way and not the other. And I know in the chat here we're saying we're not good enough. Well, I'll tell you what, we're not allowed to be good enough when we're not given an even spread of free kicks. Let's go through some of the stats to half time. Uh, it's 100 kicks to 85 in favour of Geelong, uh, also 117 to 70 uh, handball. So they're out disposing us quite substantially, 100, uh, 217 to 155. Um, they're also running at 77%, whereas we're running at 68 We are burning the ball. Uh, we look hesitant uh, with ball in hand um, and uh, not being decisive at all. And I reckon Pikey would be uh, pretty annoyed by the lack of decisiveness um, by our midfield. And I'll single out a few players in a moment. Um, inside 50s, it's actually even 25 to 25 uh, but they're running at 76% efficiency inside 50. We're only running at 48%. They've had 19 shots from their 25. We've only had the 12. Contested possession, 48 to 63. We are getting towed up inside the contest. Um, and I will talk about individuals shortly. Um, as a result, uh, they're getting clean ball and therefore their uncontested possession count is also up 135 to 86 uh, contested marks is even marks uh, around the ground though overall is uh, in Geelong's favour obviously because they're out possessing us uh, 35 to 24 marks inside 50 well if it wasn't for Tommy Lynch it'd be 7 zip but it's 7 4 uh, we are leading the tackle count 42 to 52 although I felt that their tackling in general was more effective than ours um, and tackles inside forward 50 uh, thanks to Charlie Cameron uh, Eddie Betts uh, uh, 11 to 14 in favour of Adelaide. Uh, they're certainly cutting us off. Intercept possessions 29 to 18. Uh, we're turning it over, uh, you know, far too much. Uh, clearances are even 22 to 21, but I feel like their clearances are more structured and more effective. Um, they're using the ball, whereas we're just sort of hacking it out. Um, centre clearances 6 to 5. Stoppages even 16 all. Uh, Zach Smith right on top of uh, Source. Uh, in many uh, uh, in many uh, stoppages there, um, and Source needs to lift his game because Zach Smith is monstering him at the moment. Uh, Freeze are even twelve for twelve to twelve. PJ, I don't know what game you're looking at, mate, but some of the stuff that I've seen, even even that contest where Selwood got the uh, gash above the eye, um, it, Andy Ottens from the side on view, you can clearly tell that Andy Ottens actually gets pushed into that uh, contest. Um, and uh, should have got uh, should have actually got the free for pushing the back. Uh, look, some player stats. Um, we've obviously had uh, a couple of standouts uh, in the uh, stats department. Matt Crouch is uh, trying his guts out at the moment. Twenty disposals, eleven and nine. Uh, he's had three tackles. Um, you know, he's actually. Uh, being a contested ball beast, he's got nine contested possessions, seven clearances, six inside fifties. So far, an excellent game from Matty Crouch. Uh, Richie Douglas um, is the next on eleven, and this is where our problem lies. After Matty Crouch, our next highest ball winner is Richard Douglas with eleven, Brad Crouch with ten, Tom Lynch playing as a forward uh, with ten and kick two goals, one. Rory Sloan only with the ten which is uh, probably fair enough if you spend eight minutes or nine minutes of the first quarter on the bench. Uh, Sauce with nine, Rory Laird with nine, Eddie Betts with eight. Uh, Hugh Greenwood has been good when he's been on, he's had eight. Uh, Jenkins has been soft as usual, he's had eight. Uh, and then, you know, uh, down to Kelly and Lever. Our, our driving uh, force players, Rory Sloan, Brad Crouch, um, to a lesser degree, uh, Wayne Millerer, 
David McKay's only had five to half time. Uh, Charlie Cameron, even though he's looked good when he's got the ball, he's only had four possessions. Uh, a big one here, or big two actually here, is Brody Smith with only four touches off halfback. Uh, two and two has been completely missing, um, as Brody has a tendency to do in big matches. Uh, he's been missing for the majority of the match. He's only had the two contested possessions. Uh, slightly worse than Brody Smith has been Rory Atkins, who just takes tiny little steps. He doesn't put any physical pressure. He's intent on trying to smother rather than trying to put body pressure on players with the ball. He does not put big paces towards the ball. He just taps around, and he's been completely ineffective, Rory Atkins. Only the three touches, uh, one kick and two handball, absolutely in, ineffective. Uh, doesn't deserve to be out there and needs to shave that bloody peroxide hair off because he's believed his own hype, and uh, the hype uh, is far too unwarranted at the moment. The way I see the game, I felt like we were in it uh, for large portions of that first half. I did feel like we were stymied by the umpiring to a certain degree. But when you have players around the ball that are just not willing to put their body in and uh, and or get easily pushed off the line of the ball or pushed out of the way, um, then you're not going to win enough of the ball to have any sort of impact on the scoreboard. And in particular, I want to point out Brad Crouch, who last week it looked like he was just starting to get himself back into some sort of reasonable form. And here we are again today uh, with Brad Crouch just getting easily pushed off the line. He uh, drops away from the contest too quickly, so if he's defeated for the ball, for the ball when it happened a couple of times. Dangerfield's first goal was as a result of Brad Crouch being pushed aside and then just jogging rather than following up and trying to put pressure on the ball carrier. Brad Crouch has got to stay in the game for longer. He's actually got to lift himself and will himself into the contest. Now, maybe that stoush towards the end of the second quarter with Matt Crouch getting jumper punched by Hawkins uh, will fire Brad up. But by God, something's got to fire Brad up because at the moment, Matt Crouch is just pretty much a lone hand in our uh, centre work and our around-the-ground midfield work. Brad Crouch, it's about time that you played like the player that we know you can be because if you don't step up, you don't deserve to be in the team. Richard Douglas, although he's had 10, I felt like uh, he's uh, only just uh, going uh, 7-3. and three. Um One thing that I did like seeing, and we predicted actually during the week, is Luke Brown going to Joel Selwood. I felt like Luke's done a reasonable job. He could probably be a touch tighter around the contest, but I like the move by Don Pike to actually get Luke Brown onto Joel Selwood because that does allow our other midfielders to actually get some free run. Unfortunately, again, we've seen Scott Selwood and co. just monster Rory Sloan, um, both legally and illegally. Um, and Rory's uh, struggling to make any sort of an impact, although I thought towards the end of the second quarter there he started to shrug that off. But we really need our second-tier midfielders, Brad Crouch, Rory Atkins, um, you know, uh, even blokes like uh, Hugh Greenwell, who I thought was okay when he was on, um, Wayne Miller, who seems to be rabbit in the headlights under the pressure, um, David McKay just shouldn't even be there. Um, Charlie Cameron needs to get more of the ball. Brody Smith needs to get more of the ball. Um, we our defence is exposed too much, and whilst Kyle Hardigan has made a couple of uh, uh, questionable decisions, including going for that spoil there uh, that he should have actually just nailed, and in the end he's just basically fluffed it and it's gone over the back. The fact is that we are allowing too many one-on-one contests in defence because they are just cutting us up through the midfield. There's not enough defensive work. Uh, We're not spreading defensively nearly well enough. And as a result, um, they're getting one-on-one contests. Um, And it's been a problem with our footy club since time immemorial, at least for the last six years. And, uh, you know, Don Pike and the club have shown, rightly or wrongly, a lot of faith in a few players, and I've named them, so I won't list them again. But these players have to now repay the faith. And if they don't get fired up for a game like this, if they don't actually show some fire in the guts in a game like this, then they really don't deserve to be putting on the jumper. 
And whilst there's been some good individual performances, Tom Lynch uh, up forward uh, and Matty Crouch in the middle, there's just too many players that are not willing to put their body on the line. They're not willing to actually sacrifice themselves for the jumper and for their teammates. I'm going to single out one person just before this is finished. Taylor Walker is the captain of our footy club and he is not giving a yelp. And I don't know what's wrong with Tex. I don't know whether he's injured. I don't know whether he's um, got some issues that we don't know about. But Taylor Walker, despite kicking 1-1 and, and really the goal that he missed, he should have absolutely nailed. And he looked like he just about miskicked it. Um, you know, he's actually got to step up. He's got to actually show something. And if that means that he has to play up the ground and drop Jenkins back, uh, deeper just to get himself involved then he has to do it he's giving away freeze he's not contesting well he's not in the contest he's hardly presenting he's only getting the ball when he's got clear space and yet uh, you know he's supposedly our captain and our spiritual leader and as J Mac on the chat rightly points out we've got John o. Beach sitting in the stands who absolutely tails it up every week in the SANFL deserves a spot and yet can't get a game. Uh, Andy Otten, you've got to wonder whether under real pressure Andy Otten is effective. He certainly hasn't been effective this week, um, and perhaps that experiment is over. And we've got Mitch McGovern coming back in a few weeks, but it might be worth just uh, uh, drawing a line under the Andy Otten experiment and uh, giving John O'Beach a run because John O'Beach is a is a bona fide forward who's good overhead and on the ground and hits a scoreboard. So Andy Otten needs to lift if he's going to take up a tall position up forward. And let's face it, Geelong aren't tall down back. We've got three tools up forward, Tex, Jenkins and Otten, and they've hardly taken a mark between them. Um, and part of that is through disorganisation. Part of that is through lack of opportunity. But we need these blokes to take marks. That's what they're there for. That's what they're actually getting paid for. So, look, it, for as badly as we're playing, we're only you know we're only twenty nine points down. Uh, it's not a lot in the modern game. There were patches in that second quarter where we seemed to gain the ascendancy, um, and more often than not, we undid our own good work just with some poor disposal. Um, but the other thing that we need to do is just gain some composure with ball in hand. You know, we look to be a little bit uh, panicky and a little bit uh, uh, second-guessing ourselves and hearing footsteps. We just need to gain some composure, give the first option, run hard. These are all fundamental things, and it's all right doing it against a Fremantle team when you've got the run of the play and everything's going your way. But the mark of a really good team is to be able to do it when the chips are down. And we're going to find out about Adelaide. Uh, we're going to find out a significant amount about Adelaide's mental um, uh, situation, their mental position in their second half. Because if they go down without a yelp and end up losing by 30 or 40 points, then we are not looking at a premiership team. Um, and I think that the club need to accept that whilst we're on top of the ladder, when we succumb to pressure, physical pressure... Like we like we have done against North Melbourne, Melbourne, and now Geelong, it doesn't matter where the game is played, whether it's played at home or away. If you don't bring your A game, and if you don't bring the right attitude, and if you aren't prepared to put your body on the line, then you don't deserve to be in the jumper. And I hope, for our sakes as supporters, that we actually see the players step up in the second half and at least make a fight of it because at the moment it's been insipid and somewhat embarrassing and surely after 13 years this club has had enough of putting up these performances at Geelong tune in tomorrow night or sorry Sunday night for the wrap uh, hopefully we've got something nice to talk about but it's not looking too good at the moment um, but thanks guys, everyone on the chat um, for joining me, uh, loving your comments, uh, sharing your pessimism, but uh, let's keep the faith, faith and see if we can get them over the line second half. See you Sunday night.